Hi everyone! Today we're going to be learning the basics of taxonomic classification. The best way to get your feet wet would be to teach you some history and introduce you to binomial nomenclature. Now what exactly is binomial nomenclature? Well, it's a formal system that's used to name species that includes their genus and specific epithet. You might be wondering, how do I distinguish between the genus and specific epithet in binomial nomenclature? Well, let me show you an example with Lamium purpureum L, otherwise known as dead nettle, which is a super common longweed. The first part of the Latin binomial will be what genus the species is a member of. In this case, it is Lamium. The second part of the Latin binomial is the specific epithet. This is used to distinguish a species from other members of its genus. In this case, the specific epithet is purpureum. Now, the genus and specific epithet together are considered the Latin binomial. However, you can take it a step further and add what is called an authority. An authority is an abbreviation that represents an individual who named the species. In this case, L stands for Carl Linnaeus, who is actually the one who invented the binomial nomenclature system. Something you may have noticed is that the Latin binomial is italicized, but the authority is not. The authority should never be italicized, but the Latin binomial should always be. The only exception is if the species name is being written on paper. If you're writing the name down, the Latin binomial should be underlined instead of being italicized. The authority still does not get underlined though. Now what if someone made a revision to a species name? We can see an example of that here with Gymnocladus dioecus LK coach or the Kentucky coffee tree. First, let's spot our Latin binomial. Gymnocladus is our genus. Dioecus is our specific epithet. Now what's that L that's in the parentheses? That is our parental authority, which marks who was the first to use that specific epithet for that species, but someone else made a change to the name of the species. If we recall from earlier, L stands for Linnaeus, so he originally described this species. Now the name outside of the parentheses is called the combining authority. This is the person who is second to use the specific epithet for a species and made a change to the name of the species. K. Koch stands for Karl Koch, who is a German botanist. Now, sometimes you may not be able to fully identify a species or might want to refer to multiple species in a genus at once. So what do you do in that situation? Well, to answer this question, let's talk about the different ways you can write the word species, which can be written as SP or SPP. Both of these ways have their own meanings and can get confusing. To help explain this, I've recruited two different species, Trifolium repens, or white clover, and Trifolium pretens, or red clover. So let's start with sp, which is used when the specific species is not designated. For instance, if we look at just Trifolium repens, and we knew that it was a Trifolium, but we didn't know its specific epithet, we would just say Trifolium sp. Now, if we wanted to refer to both Trifolium repens and Trifolium pretens at the same time without using their full names, we could do so by using the SPP ending. This ending is used when referring to more than one species in a genus, so we could just say Trifolium SPP. Notice that neither SP or SPP is italicized. Only the genus and specific epithet get italicized. Taxonomy, otherwise known as systematics, is the science of classifying organisms. In schools today, we typically learn about the Linnaean system of classification, which was created by our dear friend, Carl Linnaeus. Due to this, you might recognize some form or another of this pyramid I'm showing you. As you move up the pyramid through the taxonomic levels, each step becomes more exclusive than the last until you reach the species level, which only has one member. To better understand this, let's take a look at an example species common dandelion, otherwise known as Taraxacum officinale FH wig. The first and largest of the hierarchical ranks is domain. There are three domains that an organism can fall into, which are eukarya, bacteria, and archaea. A dandelion isn't a bacteria or an archaean, so it's a eukarya. Now, this does mean that somewhere down the line, the common dandelion is more closely related to you and I than to a bacteria or an archaean. Now we can break eukarya into smaller kingdoms, which are Animalia, Plantae, Protista, Fungi, and Monera. A dandelion is a plant, so it belongs to Plantae. And Plantae can now be broken down into several smaller divisions, but the one we're focused on is Tracheophyta, 
which is the division that contains all vascular plants. Some examples of other members of tracheophyta include rattlesnake ferns, red maples, and violets. These plants look very different from our dandelions, so we have a bit of slimming down to do yet. If we break tracheophyta down into classes, the only one we'll want to focus in on is Magnolopsida, which contains dicot plants. Some examples of plants that are in Magnolopsida are Virginia bluebells, spring beauties, and the Dutchman's breeches. These plants still look pretty far from our dandelions, so we still have a bit of trimming down to do. If Magnolopsida is broken down into orders, the one we'll be interested in is Asterales, which are a group of dicot flowering plants. Some examples of members of the Asterales class include Spike Lobelia and Black-Eyed Susans. We're getting a bit closer to appearing like a dandelion, but we're still quite not there. As far as families go, dandelions belong to Asteraceae, and Asteraceae is known as the sunflower or daisy family. It contains plants like coneflowers and obviously the ashy sunflower. Okay, we're almost to the finish line. We've just got genus and the species level left. The common dandelion belongs to the genus Taraxacum, which consists of all dandelions. Two common dandelions in this genus are the red seeded dandelion and of course, the common dandelion. A way to officially distinguish between these two very similar species would be to filter by a specific epithet therefore going to the species level. Again, a genus and specific epithet make up a species name. So we started at domain, then went through kingdom, division, class, order, family, genus, and have finally reached Taraxacum officinale at the species level. Alrighty, thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed learning about the basics of taxonomic classification with me. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in my next video.